Hello and welcome back to uh, another session on model and framework from vulnerability. So uh, I've, we've talked about it that there have been some uh, new areas uh, models which have been developed to explain uh, vulnerability and despite the gist of these models for vulnerability assessment which have evolved over time no consensus have been made on which model is very much effective in understanding the concept of vulnerability. So we are trying to be uh, in today's literature because of the uh, evolving nature and multi-dimensional or multifaceted nature of the concept of vulnerability. There have been numerous effort being made to have a unified understanding of vulnerability. But because of uh, involvement of different disciplines or uh, you can say professions, the concept of vulnerability is usually it's uh, it varies very much. So what happened that a lot of uh, models have been developed over time to develop an understanding of vulnerability. So firstly, uh, the hazard of place model by Cutter, uh, by Susan Cutter in 1996, uh, she gave uh, the model which she terms that hazards of place vulnerability models that contains that vulnerability is very much uh, depending upon dependent on uh, the spatial scale as well as the bio biophysical vulnerability and social vulnerability that would ultimately shape your vulnerability. So that uh, model basically emphasized that your vulnerability is very much varying according to the space. So spatially, it will vary from one city to another, from one village to another village, it will vary. Predominantly because of the biophysical characteristics of an area, which with by, by biophysical vulnerability, I mean uh, geographical elevation, some proximity, some kind of geographical, uh, you can say, uh, we, we use the word uh, hazard, hazardous environment, um, depending on the geographical conditions, you can say climatic conditions that would result in biophysical vulnerability. And then is the social vulnerability in which different kind of social condition appeared in the city, in the, in an area which result in social vulnerability and overall will result in your place vulnerability. The second model called Ball's double structure mode of vulnerability, it basically tried to explain the internal external aspects of vulnerability that uh, in, uh, that vulnerability is happening because of the internal because of the lack of capacities a society which will not have developed their capacities their internal vulnerability will be weak as well as the external factors which will be affecting which is exposure and the effect or you can say hazard value that will impact the vulnerability so bowls double structure of vulnerability was another model which tried to explain it. So the very first model, the another model which comprehensively explained, uh, sorry, the first uh, kind of model which tried to explain how disaster happens. So that pressure and release model explains the progression of vulnerability, how a disaster, how the socioeconomic condition in an area interacts with the environment or a hazard and converts into a disaster. So basically, we, uh, uh, this Wisner or Blake model, we call it, uh, that basically try to explain that there are some kind of unsafe conditions which have developed over time due to some different uh, pressure on the institutions that kind of cities or settlements have been developed and that have resulted in some kind of unsafe conditions and then ultimately with interacting with hazard on the environment have ultimately resulted in disaster. Another model, DFID model, is another model which is predominantly being used in the context of poverty that has been re, let's say, customized in case of disaster in which vulnerability is very much depending on the livelihoods or the social impact. So that, that framework is also trying to explain 
that vulnerability is, is can be divided into human natural financial and social capital which will result into vulnerability another model which developed in 2003 the turner's vulnerability model argued that global environmental change can be observed through the lens of sensitivity exposure and resilience so vulnerability is a component or is can be divided into exposure sensitivity and capacity so resilience is here as seen as a, as a capacity measure in which vulnerability can be overall vulnerability can be measured another very uh, comprehensive model of burgo uh, this uh, the but the call it burgardi brickman model which is also termed as uh, bbc model it also talked about some uh, uh, their vulnerabilities must be seen as a dynamic phenomena within the horizons of environmental social and economic spheres so another like it tried to explain the link between hazard vulnerabilities so based on previous works of wisner uh, so more models started developing in explaining how disaster happens and start integrating hazard into vulnerability and risk so here there in the the concept of risk and vulnerability is there starting emerging the philosophy of disaster risk reduction started emerging in which vulnerability was paying uh, like uh, contributing a very major part in developing your disaster risk so depending upon which sphere of vulnerability we are going to be measuring overall risk will be measured another eight step module by schroter also examined that vulnerability is a very complex and it starts from different issues and it uh, evolves into different scenarios so that model also try to explain vulnerability another uh, bitman model of we call it the spheres of uh, bitman sphere model in which uh, uh bitman basically broadened the theory of vulnerability by suggesting that five spheres including multidimensional features physical social institution and environmental features must collectively work together to form vulnerability so it will start at from a very basic level internally then based on some human some capacities and then a different dimension can be incorporated to examine the vulnerability the concept of vulnerability so each uh, so depending upon the context each sphere is representing a con context on which vulnerability is being approached and which is being analyzed so multiple definitions are different conceptual frameworks exist, but these groups have provided different views on vulnerability okay this uh, the very famous model of ipcc uh, we call it ipc special on manage uh, srex model also s r e x model framework this describe vulnerability as a subsequent part of risk and hazard and exposure so interactive interaction of all these three will result in your climate risk or disaster risk so that was used to examine uh, with, uh, to explain the climate change aspect to be integrated into disaster risk reduction another model in 2013 by which is called the move model methods for improvement of vulnerability is when europe was put forth by brickman and it tried to incorporate some different emerging uh, phenomena of adaptation governance and these must be interact uh, these are very much interdependent in which uh, you can observe that vulnerability intervention vulnerability as a society plays a very vital role in shaping our overall risk and that will ultimately risk in uh, ultimately uh, contribute towards institutional or risk governance and that will ultimately launch some kind of adaptation strategies and that will against that adaptation strategy would help us in counteracting vulnerabilities through proper risk management and reduction measures so that was another very comprehensive model being produced by the bitman which explained the concept of vulnerability and quite recently the framework of ipcc this is the current framework which often used by climate change scientists is the climate risk is basically 
can be com is usually composed of vulnerability, hazards, and exposure. And sometimes in in vulnerability, we we'll, we can subdivide it into maybe sensitivity and adaptive capacity because we are talking about climate change. Thank you.